I thank you very much, Samson, and good morning to especially the, our patients who are in the remotest area of Ghana, my district, and everybody, and all the hardworking health workers who are also working in such areas, and even in the cities where our hardworking health professionals sometimes we need a very simple, essential, life-saving medicine and he will not get it. Something is true. We've been on this thing for almost more than a year now. It's mm. not only June. So we approach the cabinet and I'm very happy that the Vi His Excellency the Vice President understood the use of technology in healthcare delivery. Mm. And for that matter, the whole cabinet. And that's what we want to do. He, he has been in the forefront, forefront of what of you, you may say, creating a smart economy. <coughs> Thank you. He is into, he is the one leading all the digitization processes. Yes. Mm. And I believe that digitization is a way to go as a country. We have to take advantage of modern technology to improve the efficiency and effectiveness of healthcare delivery. That's the only way I believe that we can achieve universal health coverage mm. in this country. We have all signed to the Sustainable Development Goals 2030. And this service that we are talking about with the drones, or what we call the autonomous remotely piloted aircraft system, is going to do, it's already been done. But it's been done very inefficiently. Because as I speak now, if somebody is in Begro Hospital, I'm not talking even about a rural area. If somebody is in Begro Hospital, and he needs maybe an old negative blood. The pa patient is bleeding, and the <coughs> patient needs it. And you can get the old negative blood maybe at the Kolebu blood center. The patient will get the old negative blood, but somebody pays for it. If the patient is lucky, the hospital may use a hospital vehicle to move from Begro to Kolebu, pick it, and go back, and the patient will be given the blood. You, you look at the time that it will take for the uh, the, the hospital vehicle to move from Begro to Kolebu and back. But in most cases, it's a patient's relative who does this. If a patient relative, by all means, will hire a taxi, move from Begro, come to Kolebu, the taxi will be waiting, the blood will be cross matched and all sorts of things, and the blood will be given to the patient. There's a fee to the blood, the processing fee and the fee of the blood itself. The relative will pay for all these things and move of the blood to be grow to be given to the patient. If you are not lucky, by the time the relative reaches the grow hospital, the patient is gone. Doctors and health professionals will be waiting. Sometimes I'm a doctor. I've been a doctor throughout my life, throughout my adult life. I've seen cases where we lose patients, not because we cannot manage the patient, but because we don't have the essential things to treat the patient. And that is what we are talking about. So this service fee, which we are going to pay, is already being paid in a way by either the, the, the patient's relative or by the uh, hospital itself. That's where we are going to fail. And we are not buying the drones. I want to repeat here. Government is not buying any drone. Government is going into a service agreement to buy the services that we are doing now through a company who I will say here, I'm sure you, you, you will ask me about why so source. I want somebody to tell us if there's any company in the world who is using drones to deliver healthcare commodities. Mm. So far as I know, it is only being done, we check, it's only being done in only one country in the, in the world, and that is in African country, and it's in Rwanda. And if you look at Article 663 of the Public Procurement Act, it gives a way when we want to procure services that there's a, a single uh, company who is doing it, or it's a specific uh, thing that you want to buy, you can apply to the Public Procurement Authority, and the Public Procurement Authority board will sit and then approve it. And that's exactly what we did. Mm. So something, we didn't rush it through only in November. We've been working on it. There have been a committee formed by, through the Office of the His Excellency, the Vice President, and this committee has been working. We have the National Security, Ghana, uh, Ghana Civil Aviation Authority, National Blood the transmission services, um, Ghana Health Service, the Ministry of Health, and then some lawyers who are part of it. And we have been looking at it, and then we come out of a service agreement. Mm. So this, if what I'm holding now, is 
Ministry of Health and the Fly Zip Line Ghana Limited Service Agreement. It is not a purchase agreement. Okay. It's a in, service agreement. In, in the 16th November 2018, um, request for approval for the engagement of a fair for the design, installation, and operation of an unmanned aerial vehicles. That is UAVS. Yes. For the delivery of medicines and medical supplies to health facilities across Ghana through single sourcing procurement procedures. The procurement authority had expressed some concern and they say that when you wrote to them on the 14th of November, they responded to you and suggested to you that they wanted you to work on the figures and bring them downward. They were seeking a downward revision. However, when you, what you, prevent, you presented eventually, rather, had gone up. Yes, yeah, something I will explain that one. You see, we ask, when the Public Procurement Authority asks us, maybe bring it downwards. The question we ask Public Procurement Authority, have you checked how much it costs elsewhere, where they are doing it already? at Rwanda. Do you have any benchmark? You see, Ghana, and for that matter, in this part of our world, we normally think that um, if you write anything, bring it downward, do uh, value for money. Mm -hmm. But I'm a doctor. Value for money in life is not only about the money that you pay. It's about the cost of life, which is priceless. Something, if you lose one single child, a 10-year-old child, who may need an essential medicine like anti-snake venom, Maybe two amples. Which is part of this. Which is part project. of this. Which cannot be delivered. And the child dies before the child reaches where we can get anti snake venom. Or if even the child is, we are looking for anti snake venom, but anti snake venom is in another hospital which is not being used, which may expire and thrown away. You can't put cost on it. So, as a professional, I have been seeing this thing happening over and over again throughout my 38 years of prof uh, my medical profession. And that is what this technology, which has been practiced for the past two years in Rwanda, in a similar environment like ours, in an African country, the first country to do that. And then we go around the whole world, and they are the icon in this field. Why can't Ghana do the same thing, take advantage of it? And that's what we are doing. Mm. So when we did it, you see, people have been saying that it will cost us $27 million. I'm sure the person is looking at the 39 of the contract, mm -hmm. something. And maybe I gave you something, maybe if you can project it. Yes. I will explain um, why the person made a mistake. Okay. Because if you look at the page, tw uh, the 39 that she's looking at. So production, if you can, at this moment, uh, let's, let's put on the screen the, the document that gives us the price permutations. Okay, it's on the screen. So go ahead. Yes. You see, so if you look at it, the cost that even we sent to a public procurement authority mm. was a cost for only daytime, 7 a.m. to 7, uh, 7 p.m., uh, 5 p.m. in the day. But I said, if I remember, I particularly said that if we are going to use it for emergency, not for only blood, blood maybe you can see that in the night, if blood, somebody needs blood in the night, what happens? If somebody needs an essential medicine in the night, what, what happens? So we added the night to it. And they said that if you want to add night to it, then it means they have to then add some figure. To, that's why we negotiated for the 8,000 8, to make it 88,000. And we went back to PPA again. That they should go and do value for money and check other prices and come and tell us mm. who they are, understand they are doing. Mm. Something. If you look at page 39. Well, they say you made, you, you gave a strong argument, argument. from yes. the supplier's side. Thank you. Uh, for why the price had to go up rather than come down. Yes, because of the night. And they seem to suggest that, well, they don't have any other way to cross-check what you are doing, so they grant it to you. Yes. That's so, what they seem to yeah. say in the so letter. The, but go to so the value point for money. you So if you look mm. at what Honorable Atuforsin was saying, mm. he saw that on that page there's distribution center 1, mm -hmm. which is DC1. There's distribution center 2, which is DC2, 3, and 4. They will all be at different phases. If you look what have, we have projected, for example, something, you have phases, phase one, phase two, phase three, and full operations. 
is when it's full operations, day and night, it's 88,000. And when it's uh, phase three, that is if it, they are not delivering up to about up to 70 to 100 per day, average, is 59,000. If it is, they are delivering between 50 to 70, it's 27,000. If they are delivering up to 15, uh, 15 to 50, it's 11,000. If they are delivering less than 15, we don't pay anything at all, and we have what we call the ramp up period. If you add all together, you see all the phases will not be at the same phase. For example, we, we believe that the first distribution center, which we put, God willing, if uh, Honorable and his, uh, the parliamentarians pass it, we will start at a uh, suhum. It will take three months in phase one. They will be delivering, it's a first phase. They will be delivering about, we averagely about 15 a day until we, 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 we ramp, uh, we, we, we scale it up. They'll be delivering like only blood? Not only blood. Blood, essential medicine, and even essential um, non-medical consumption. For okay. example, if you have an accident... So they'll do that 15 a day? At least. 15 dispatches? 15 dispatches a day. Okay. In Suhum? In Suhum, that's the first uh, distribution center. Then there'll be a second distribution center. So they'll be doing it for the first three months. And the second three months, they will be in the phase two, where they will be delivering between uh, 15 to 50. And then the, we also believe that in the next three months, so for the nine months, they will be in phase one, phase two, phase three. Mm. It will not be 80, Phase 8, one, 000. phase two, phase three will cover where and where? The phase one, phase two, phase three, in one distribution center will cover, for example, Zoom, we have mapped out about 500 facilities that they will be covering. So they will cover all the 500 facilities from chips, health centers, hospitals. It may even be possible that uh, even a hospital, as I, I give example, in Begro, needs the blood. So it's at the distribution center in the Suhum. Okay. They will pick it within minutes. Okay. And in the contract that we are signing, they will deliver it between maximum 45 minutes, 35, 30 to 45 minutes they have to deliver. Give us a full idea of the coverage area. The coverage area, the radius, 80 kilometers radius. So they will be covering an area of about 160 uh, uh, kilometers diameter. It will, be, it will be, the Suhum one will cover the whole of Eastern region, including the Afram Plains. It will cover the Southern and the middle part of Water region, including the Plains. It will cover the whole of Greater Accra. It will cover part of Central region and Ashanti region. Okay. That's the first phase. All right. The second phase, immediately that they start this phase, we are mapping out doing GPS and then put the second phase, maybe I'm sure in the middle belt. Then the third phase will be in the uh, northern belt, and the one phase will be in the western part of the country. Okay. This is how we have planned it. So, so it, is, it the, is the graduation expected that at the final phase, the entire country will be covered? Yes. Okay. And this is what we are going to do. So if, you see, Honorable Ato Forsen did something, and I believe that he, had, he either did it intentionally for political gains, or he thought that nobody has read through the contract. If you read the contract, the figure that is quoted about 154, if you discount it, 145, is for all the four centers. Why does he say that it's for one distribution center? And it's, it's written something here. DC1, distribution center 1, DC2, distribution center 2, DC3, DC4. So why does he multiply it by 4 again? If that is his argument, assuming that that's how he's arguing, then if for every year, we will even pay about 9 million can I say? Because if you think that we shall be at the same faces as he has seen in page, three, in page 59, mm. uh, 39, then we will not even pay the 12 million. Okay. So I've told them that they should go back again and read it. But the actual schedule 2, which is in the contract, page 33, that is where we have explained how the, the payment structure will be like. So the page 39 is giving an example. For example, if you start in February or maybe in March, it will be three months. So only distribution center one will be working. And then you will be paying the distribution center one at phase three. So if you look at it, there is only distribution center one, which will be 48 months. But the contract becomes effective for the first day that the distribution center one starts working. So if you look at it very uh, strictly, these other distribution centers will be, will be one of them will be uh, 41 months. One of the, la the, li the last distribution center will be about 39 months. So it is not true that we are going to spend 27 million. 
And secondly, it is not true that Ghana government is buying drones. Nobody buys technology nowadays. We buy the service of technology. We want to make use of the service of technology to fill in the gap, to pay for what people are paying, on, uh, are paying themselves. And the beautiful thing about it is all, His Excellency the Vice President, through his able leadership, then said that, Director General, can't we make the corporate organizations bear this cost at least for the first four years? Then I said, this is a wonderful idea. So we sat down together. He gave, they gave us a letter, and we sent the letter to the corporate organizations. And when we went and explained to a GNPC, they saw the sense that, look, this, is, this will be one of the most important social responsibility, especially in health. So GNPC is paying for this? GNPC is a, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a major sponsor for this. They've agreed to give, we signed a contract with them to, uh, to pay, give us $1 million as a social responsibility to the, towards the good people of this country for the next five years. We have approached all the oil uh, um, companies. Mm. When I went to one of the oil companies to explain what the rationale behind this. You have only $1 million available I'm to coming. you, a promise of $1 million. No, I'm coming. You're looking Something. at twelve million, uh, twelve point five million. million. This is not one million for the whole four years. Mm. They've given, they are giving us five million. Okay. We have approached all the uh, telcos. We have approached all the oil drilling companies. When you went to one of them, I'll tell you a story. He said, I should show him, we have a graph of some of the distribution centers. And he realized that they are, they are operating in the western region. They said, Doc. If we can put one in Western region for us, then everybody will know that where we are working, we are going to give them this. And I jokingly said that we shall put one and name it after you. Mm -hmm. But on condition that you take the full uh, yearly or monthly cost. You see, why not? That this is, this he thinks will be the thing that we can use it and then they will see that what they are doing. So this is what we are doing. But after all, even if the, the telcos and all these companies are not paying. This is a bill that you are paying. For example, at the distribution center, one at which is going to sell 500 uh, um, uh, health facilities. If you divide, when they have full range, day and night, the, uh, more than 100 deliveries a day, mm. 88,000 divided by 500, if I take it like that, it's $175 a month, which is less than 1,000 Ghana cities a month. And I think, and I know, because I'm, I'm, lead, I'm, I'm, I'm the leader in the healthcare delivery. Mm. Every hospital spends more than that money, even for uh, getting all this. Okay, you take a breather here. We'll come to um, interrogate that a bit further. To see With the concerns that Clara raises, and part of those that Inusa Fuseni raised. There's a surgeon in, in the US. He's written and asked questions, and there's a document that's attributed to him, uh, Ayensu Dankwa. He, in his conclusion, asked the question that this drone system is really not the solution to the myriad of important life-threatening problems we have in our healthcare. When it comes to emergency services, the patient, the sick, the injured is much more important than the medicine or the blood that will be delivered and therefore attention should be paid to getting the injured or the sick to proper health care facilities either by ambulance either by road that's better ambulances or more quickly by air air ambulances to enable them to receive the appropriate care what Ghana really needs to begin to solve our health care is proper primary care services and education of the people so that non-communicable diseases are brought to medical attention in the <coughs> early stages and not when it is often too late as we currently have in our system. We also need to emphasize routine health maintenance, screening <coughs> care, Doing these, these things will immediately transform our healthcare system. So he paints the example of where our vice president needs emergency care. And we airlift him, we take him out of the country to the proper facility. 
where our deputy communications minister is in an accident and needs care and we take him away from the points from one point to another point 37 where there is the facility to give him that you know care and says that the solution is not taking blood or medicine to that facility that perhaps like Clara said may not even have you know qualified people in there uh, thank you very much, Samson. Um, we, we have something we call health systems. What you are doing with this is going to strengthen an aspect of the health systems. Health system, we will not have facilities throughout any country, even not in UK or US, where they are all stuck and then filled with health prof professionals and uh, uh, equipment to the same level. Mm. That's why in health systems, we have what you call referral systems. We have the, what you call the gatekeeper mechanism. So in Ghana, primary health care, he's talking about primary health care system. Right. We are one of the countries touted to be one of the best in primary health care system through our chief system. So the chief is that we are taking care to a zone, to the community. And if you do that, we have the chief system, we have the health uh, uh, sub-district, we have the health centers, we have the district hospitals and the regional hospitals. Every, every one of them has an expertise has a number of uh, facility, uh, facilities and equipment and everything which is stocked there. What we are using this technology to do is to make sure that we support from the higher level, the lowest level. Mm. And that's exactly what we are going to do. And beyond the primary care, he's talking about part of it. He's talking about I'm coming. <laughs> lack of ambulances I'm coming. or non-functional Ambulance. ambulances Ambulance. in a country yes. where the fleet of vehicles at the presidency yes. are... 50 times yes. what you yes. you have in ambulances. Ambulance, ones. ambulance alone doesn't save life. You can take an ambulance to a place. You see, people are talking. That's why I say, I don't want the politics to come in. Mm. People are talking. But when you have an accident on a highway, the next available place they take you to is at a health center, even a maternity home. And if such maternity home, you need a pint of blood, not even, even a pint of blood, maybe you are an asthmatic, you go into asthmatic attack. The maternity home or the health center will not stock uh, anti-asthmatic uh, drug there because it will get expired. And then a system is in place where within a matter of 15 minutes, 30 minutes, we drop you such a drug. That is what you are talking about. That is what, you see, you are talking about a deputy minister who was taken from a place to another place. Mm. Yes, for a care, he has maybe a fracture. You don't fix fractures. In even a district hospital, uh, in a health centers or maternity okay. rooms. So this is what we are talking about. So it's not only about blood, blood and blood. Right. And madam, we are doing what you call um, a, a skill, uh, what sh a task shifting. I can tell you, we've done it in Ghana Health Service in such a way that family planning activities are higher in the rural areas than even in Accra, because we have taught the community health nurses, the enrolled nurses, how to insert implants. Mm. This is what we call tax shifting. So in this system, it's a total holistic system that you are going to do. So that if you drop something there, somebody is there who can give it, who has been trained to give it, and somebody sitting up, up in a crowd or somewhere, through our teleconsultation system, which we have put in place, will then be telling the person what to do. And that person, if it's a surgeon, he takes full responsibility until the patient is taken to the okay. first place. So tell us about the baseline. The baseline. And then also... I mean, what's the rationale? Rwanda, there's a reason. What's the reason for Ghana's situation? And then I'll ask, you, I'll let you answer some of the questions Imani yes. has posed. The, 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 the baseline, we've done the baseline. The, num the number of maternal deaths, the highest uh, cause of maternal deaths in this country is hemorrhage or bleeding. The woman who is in the remotest area, you saw a lady in the, all the social media who was carried on a motorcycle and the people were carrying the person. He needs blood. If blood has been dropped and that's where he is, he, can, he, he <laughs> may not need to carry that patient through the river. So uh, the traditional birth as attendants will administer blood? It's not, it's not traditional birth as under who is that? The remote area, no, because no, we it's have not difficult. It is not we tradi train traditional I'm birth attendants. It's not traditional we have birth. Compounds. We have, yes, but we train we have because we had a difficulty. See, okay. We train you see, traditional birth. You save part of your you see, salary for cheap you see, compounds. You see, so he, he has, let, let's he, listen to him. He doesn't know <laughs> that now we have moved into another stage where we have cheap compounds, where we have community evidence. No, I contributed to ourselves. So please, it is not traditional birth attendant who give the blood. 
it's a, we are talking about the chief compound or the health center where the blood can be given, where a trained person is there to be given it. And I'm talking about, so about 37% of the people. See, in Rwanda, when they did that, they delivered 13,000 blood in the remotest villages. And they saved lives. They've reduced their maternal mortality by about uh, half. In Ghana, we are reducing our maternal mortality, but we want to strengthen it and make sure that this work is being done already. And two, uh, essential, essential medicines. People are dying from uh, cardi cardiovascular disease and all these things because maybe they need an essential medicine when they are in crisis. These are all things which should be delivered. Mm. So we have a baseline. Not that we don't have any baseline. So you are doing talking. this along ensuring adequate provision, provision of, of things, the facilities, facilities that are needed. Yes. Because there are, there are districts where there's completely no health facilities. Yeah, so we are working together. We are not mm. doing only drones. Okay. Drones, is uh, uh, this is failing as a, a part of... They are telling things. you that the amount of money you are pumping into these drones alone... Over four years. Could... Is, could it's not money. Something could get you so much. Something. It's not money which is sitting with the Ministry of Health. Mm. It's money that we are already paying. Okay. But these services, we are going to make it more efficient and more You uh, see, effective. you opened something. I thought that was the statistics you were going to share with us about the baseline study. Oh, I didn't bring the baseline study okay. statistics here. So we that have we can, it in we our can annual benefit from. Yeah, in our annual report, we okay. tell people what kills the uh, people, what are the morbidities, what are the mortalities. We have all of them. We also follow the data, how we are reducing it. We are reducing our infant mortality, maternal mortality. It has reduced. From, for example, our recent infant uh, institutional infant mortality, about, uh, maternal mortality is about 109.75 as to 1. 146 yeah. in the year I, 2016. I think, I think we will need So these are some of the things need, that we, we need. We can give you some figures behind this. I can come and sit here the to next To properly time. understand the need yeah. for uh, this introduction. But something, mm. there's a need for this introduction. Okay. What I'm telling you that mm. we are taking advantage of information communication technology mm. to improve the services and make it efficient. Imani says there's a van delivery mechanism. Yes. And the van delivery mechanism, the full cost per two... Um, kilogram of blood, that's four pints of blood, mm -hmm. delivered to a patient from a facility within 80 kilometer radius, comes to $0.75. Um, uh, the, the drone premium is nearly $18 per blood a bag. It costs higher than the retail price of one pint of blood in those Ghanaian uh, facilities where blood is sold. Check this again. They say the cost of mm -hmm. collection, screening, and storage of blood in the current Ghanaian health system is currently estimated at $12 a bag. The effect of the drone premium would be to increase this to uh, $32 on average. A nearly 270% increase. Contrast this with a road-based hub and spoke model that would add a maximum of $2 with minimal loss of speed in delivery. Something. I don't know where money did this calculation from. I know even the blood, when they are doing the testings and all these things, cost 100 Ghana cities, apart from the cost of the blood. Mm. So if he's doing these calculations, he should have t given us the source where he got it from. And he should, I don't know where he got the se 75 uh, cents from. Cents, yeah. i give you an example. If you take somebody who is coming for blood from Bagoro to Kolebu, is it 75 cents? That's your own expense in, is in, it four cities? in hiring a taxi, you mean? Yeah, is it four cities? Even if he takes Trotro, mm -hmm. is it four cities? So when somebody is giving this calculation, I've read it. Mm. He should come out and tell us. I know that he said that, uh, for example, Zip line delivers six uh, deliveries in a, in a day, isn't yes. it? It is, a, it is, I don't think it's true. So it is, it now it's up to, it's on him to give us where he got these figures and these things from. I can tell you, and I would say it emphatically here, that the calculation he's giving is all not correct. Mm. You should go to National Blood Transfusion Services and get his calculation right. Uh, t giving blood and then doing the test is not 12 CDs, $12 equivalent. Okay. So it's not true. And then there's, uh, the, the drones don't, don't take only one pint at mm. a time. It can take four pints at a time if you need it. 
So the calculations he's doing. The drones don't take what? It's, it's 1.75 uh, kilos. Okay, 1.75 mm. kilos. Okay, and that's 4 pounds. Okay, so. Yes, can okay. take a 4 pounds. Yes. So, so, so all mm. what Imani is doing, mm. I'm surprised. Because the, the, the author of what he has done is one somebody who is a believer they have done. in technology. Okay. So when we are introducing technology to improve the service efficiency, and then he's bringing these calculations. So it's not on me. He has said it. So he has to prove to us where he got all his calculations from. But I can, I can, I can contest. I don't think it's right. Mm. The, the, there's a question that is being asked, that if uh, the blood is refrigerated at the depot, you're going to create four distribution centers. Yes. If the blood is refrigerated there, what about the drone delivery box itself? Will it be refrigerated? You see, whoever is saying that the blast... Because really the question is that uh, from the videos of Zipline, yes. um, you would see that the blood is wrapped in a cloth and placed on the drone. And there is no refrigerator on the drone carrier. Yes, when you pick blood from the blood bank, you take it from the uh, a refrigerator. The, the switching centers will have refrigerators, mm. which are built. The, the cost of all these things are borne by the company. OK. And then they will put into an air vacuum type of box where do you put things around it, mm. Fra fragile uh, packages. When you go for blood from blood bank, if it doesn't take le more than maybe two, three, four hours, the blood, when it even comes, you tore it. You put it into uh, water so that you have come to t room temperature. So they are not in a cloth. It is in a, a kind of uh, air vacuum so that mm. when they uh, parachute it down, it doesn't get destroyed. Okay. So we don't refrigerate the boxes. Okay, when they move from the depot, mm -hmm. where will the drones land? Is there the drones will land at the facilities at a place. So they parachute it. Mm -hmm. So within five minutes before they read there, you are, the, a text message or telephone call goes to the facility that we are about five minutes away. So somebody stands there, is dropped, and you pick it. Somebody who is trained? One of the health, health workers. Everybody okay. will be trained. All right. Stands there and then gets it. Okay. Takes it and uses okay. it. Okay. 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 Um, interesting. Can yes. I ask, uh, but, 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 can but, 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 but if, if I can have you Samson. two minutes each, Samson, yeah. let if you me. want to interact with him to better appreciate yes. this, or you have any questions for him, Samson, let, let me, him address Samson, them let and let then we'll take a break. Let yeah. me say something. You mm. see, when Honorable uh, 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 Husseini mm. was talking, mm. you know, he never got into the calculation again. But now I'm sure he's convinced. I'm not convinced. That, that they, they, <laughs> they, no, no, they no. I'm did not a something. man. I'm not a finance man. No, okay. it's all, this is not finance. Lawyer. So now just listen to him. This is not finance. It's the wrong road to start. This is not, fi not finance. Doc. So I'm sure mm. you are now convinced. So you go and tell at the person who he is says he's I'm not, not a finance man. So hold on and listen to him. Hold on and listen to him. I'm not a finance man. I'm just looking at the agreement. In two minutes. Yeah. Doctor, you have four centers Northern, Brownhaffle, Western, and Central. The only center which is now, we know the particular site. We are going site. to have four centers. Okay, yeah, we are going to have four centers. Oh. The only center that we, now, we are now... And the drones will be flying, the radius, maximum radius is yes. 80 kilometers. Yes. And where will central be, be located? In Cape Coast? Uh, I said that the only center that we have all agreed now is the Suhum center. The, the, the second center, the oh. third and the fourth center, we will adjust it as and when. Okay. And and so so, so I, I was just wondering... That we have one of the, and I spoke about terrain and the challenges of the solution. And I thought, taking it from your pic, the picture of the woman sitting on the motorbike, mm -hmm. I thought that a front plains area ought to have been one of the priority areas for your consideration. Yeah, I told you that the first drone center will cover a front plains. This is a Victoria, this is not it. But as I said, that we have settled on to whom to serve the first distribution center. And the front place is part of it. A front okay. place will be covered 80 kilometers? Yes. The where we are putting it, it will cover. This okay. 80, not land kilometers. Eh, straight. Maybe from what he's suggesting, yeah. it is the case that the question <laughs> of the baseline study you ask, yeah. they have a baseline study specific yes. determining this uh, project. Yes. And in that project, the first place of priority should be so. Yes. Is that what it is? That's what we are doing. Interesting. Okay, so um, let's have uh, Clara interact with you as well. Uh, so I think
think I will ask my question uh, off air. Off air? Yes. Oh, come on. Yes, then we'll <laughs> so that we interact well. Yeah, well yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but because I, it, it, I, it has to do with more with the... Forgive their, me. Uh, yes. Mm. It, but the question actually mm. borders on the agreement. And mm. because I don't want the discussion to prolong, you said it's a service that you are contracting. I was just curious as to whether you, you actually have a, a, an arrangement, you have negotiated a technology transfer arrangement that yes. would... Yeah, thank you very much. This is a very important question. We have, we have negotiated te technology transfer agreement. We've put in the agreement mm -hmm. that there will be the issue is uh, have a training center within the four years so that we train our young people here in, uh, 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 in, in, in drones. I and see. the who knows, Ghana may be the drone center mm. for the re, for the sub region. I would be I would be happy to see how that works because I work in a sector where I know that we usually put technology transfer agreements in transfer arrangements in agreements. Yes. We never follow through, mm -hmm. so we always say that okay, you you are supposed to train this, and a lot of the <coughs> agreements I've seen is there. The law provides for it. When it comes at the end of the transaction, we never follow through. Mm -hmm. So I would be curious to see how this will be different. Mm -hmm. I'll give you an example. We. Those who went to Rwanda mm -hmm. realized that well, now, we now Rwanda is 100% manned by Rwandese. No, I'm not talking, I'm talking about our situation. And in our situation, with. already they have about six young people that they are working off, IT, uh, engineers, pharmacists, and this. that's what we are going to do. We will follow it. It is in our uh, SOPs, everything that we have done, and we are going to make sure that it's Ghanaians. The technology will be transferred to Ghanaians. The young men from Zipline, California, they want to set up these things, these things all over the world. Okay. So they want to do it and they move. Mm. They want to do it, hand over and move. That's what they are doing. Will That's the what they are doing in Rwanda. Okay. Will the agreement be made public so that we can... Yeah, we'll make it on, public. Yeah, if it's online, then we can all have access yeah. to it. And we'll we'll put it online. We want let's parliament to it. approve it. Let's and let's then we'll put it uh, online. Uh, two minutes with you. Well, not two minutes. Just a yeah. question. I mean, the certification process by the GCAA. Yes. What is the status? The status is that GCAA have gone there. In fact, as I know, on the 4th of December, they wrote to the Honorable Speaker of Parliament, and they told Honorable Speaker of Parliament that they've gone, they have looked, they arranged that they will fly and everything, and they are satisfied, and they will give the certification when the parliamentary provides them. So okay. they are ready. A letter is there. Okay. I can share the letter with you if you like. Okay. Um, what do you say about those who say there was an original entity that was supposed to have um, done this business, but there was what you may say a non-ceremonious abrogation of that? Um, I'm talking about Mama Help, not Zipline. I'm not aware of that. You're not aware? No. Okay.